know from planet physiology in this video we shall have overview of respiratory system whenever we say the word respiration we think of taking in oxygen and removing carbon dioxide from our body so this is just a part of respiration so this exchange of gases is taking place at two levels and based on this respiration can be divided into two external and internal external respiration involves gas exchange across the lungs that is between the lungs and the blood this process requires ventilation that is the movement of gases in and out of the lungs then only it will be exchange and then transport of this gases from blood to the various tissues so all these are the parts of external respiration once this oxygen reaches to tissues it will be taken up by the cell and it will be utilized to produce energy that is atp and as a by product there will be formation of carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide in turn again will enter into the blood at the level of tissue so this gaseous exchange at the level of tissues as well as utilization of this oxygen to form carbon dioxide they are part of internal respiration how do we exactly take in air based on that this ventilation process can be divided into two positive pressure breathing and negative pressure breathing whenever air is forced into the alveoli it is called as positive pressure breathing and usually it will be seen in some lower animals and if the human because of some problem if they are on respirators like ventilators where oxygen is forced into the lungs then only it will be positive pressure breathing under normal circumstances human beings perform negative pressure breathing that means due to contraction of respiratory muscles there is creation of negative pressure within the alveoli and that sucks air into the alveoli it is called as negative pressure breathing in physiology classes study of respiratory system will be done under the following headings pulmonary ventilation which deals with changes in the various pressures and lung volumes and the mechanism how it is brought about next is the gas exchange across the respiratory membrane it deals with the structure of respiratory membrane and all the factors that govern this gas exchange next is the transport of gases like how oxygen is taken up by the blood and then transported to the various tissues in the same way how carbon dioxide is taken up by the blood from the tissues and then transported to the alveoli all these processes are regulated by various structures in the brain as well as in the peripheral part of the body and that forms the regulation of respiration if anything goes wrong with any of these processes that will be the clinical aspects related to each so clinical aspects will be dealt along with each section to understand all these processes one should know the structure of respiratory system so let us study the structure in detail we take in air from atmosphere into the lungs through nose and we exhale also through nose but oral cavity also can do this function so both this nasal cavity as well as oral cavity are the part of respiratory system this nasal as well as oral cavity posteriorly they are united to form pharynx pharynx continues downward and divides into two anterior portion is called as larynx and the posterior is called as esophagus and this esophagus is concerned with digestive system so we are not going to deal with that so we are going to concentrate only on this larynx the anterior division normally it will be kept in open state or open condition only when you are swallowing anything this larynx will be closed by a structure called as epiglottis larynx contains muscles which form vocal cords and these vocal cords help in act of phonation so this phonation is closely concerned with respiration after the larynx begins trachea and trachea is always kept in patent state with the help of cartilaginous rings 
trachea divides into two primary bronchi one goes to right and one goes to left side of the body singular is bronchus and plural is bronchi so there are two primary bronchi and this division takes place at the level of t5 fifth thoracic vertebra each primary bronchus divides into secondary bronchi which in turn will divide and redivide to form tertiary bronchi and tertiary bronchi in turn will divide to form terminal bronchioles here the term used is bronchiole because they are very smaller in diameter terminal bronchioles will then give rise to respiratory bronchioles which will form alveolar ducts each alveolar duct will end in a blind sac called as alveolus they will be a group of alveoli bunched together and that entire group is called as alveolar sac many such alveolar sacs will form ultimately the lungs what are the changes taking place in the airway from trachea to alveoli first and foremost which can be noted easily is there is decrease in the diameter of airway passage and as diameter decreases surface area increases the amount of cartilages decrease amount of cilia lining the epithelial cells of this passage will decrease also the mucus secreting cells and submucosal gland decrease but the quantity of smooth muscles increases smooth muscles they play very important role in regulation of bronchial diameter final division of respiratory system is alveoli and is alveoli they are lined only by pneumocytes now this entire respiratory system right from nose till the alveoli for clinical purposes is divided into two parts from nose till larynx it is called as upper respiratory tract so this upper respiratory tract includes all the structures from nose till the larynx and it also includes paranasal sinuses which forms the nasal cavity from trachea till the alveoli is called as lower respiratory tract now we have seen that trachea undergoes numerous divisions ultimately to form bronchioles and then the alveoli these branches are given numbers and they are called as divisions so there are specific number of divisions in tracheobronchial tree from trachea first division is primary bronchi and when the terminal bronchioles are formed that is the division number 16 so these divisions from trachea to terminal bronchial that is division number 16 is called as conducting zone because air in this particular part of tracheobronchial tree does not participate in gas exchange and therefore this space is also called as dead space from 17th division onward till 23rd division it constitutes respiratory zone where gas exchange takes place as you can see in this picture this is the terminal bronchiole and it gives rise to respiratory bronchiole which is division number 17th respiratory bronchioles ultimately will terminate to form balloon like structure called as alveolus there are many such alveoli grouped together to form alveolar sac from respiratory bronchial till the alveolar sac is the site where gas exchange is taking place so this is known as respiratory zone the surface area of this respiratory zone is about 70 square meter as there is gas exchange taking place there has to be blood supply as you can see this is the pulmonary artery which will ultimately branch to form capillaries and this pulmonary artery will be rich in carbon dioxide so at the level of this alveoli carbon dioxide will be taken up by the alveoli from this blood in turn blood will take up oxygen from the alveoli so let us see the structure where this gas exchange is taking place in brief shown here is a single alveolus cut open epithelial cells lining alveoli are called as pneumocytes these pneumocytes are thin and simple squamous cells there are two types of pneumocytes type 1 and type 2 type 1 pneumocytes are the main cells which constitute about 90% of the alveolar epithelium these are flat cells and therefore gas exchange can take place easily across this cells type 1 cells are shown in this yellow color 
shown in this blue color are type 2 pneumocytes. These are little thicker in diameter and they are granular in nature and they secrete surfactant. So, this type 2 pneumocytes they constitute about 10 percent of the alveolar epithelial cells. Apart from pneumocytes, other cells are also present in the alveoli and they include alveolar macrophages as you can see here in violet color, then lymphocytes and plasma cells. They play very important role in removing all the pathogens or the particulate material which has succeeded to reach to the alveoli. Then certain cells are called as APUD cells, full form is amine precursor uptake decarboxylation and they secrete substances like VIP that is vasoactive intestinal peptide as well as substance P. Mass cells are also present in the alveoli and these are responsible for allergic reactions. All these individual alveoli are interconnected with each other through pores called as pores of cone as you can see this is the connection between the two neighboring alveoli. Now let us see the coverings of lungs. This coverings of the lungs are called as pleuri, singular is pleura and you can imagine with the help of this diagram, this is the lung and this is the fluid filled balloon. If this lungs they are inserted in this fluid filled balloon, you can see this balloon will be covering the entire surface of lung. So, similarly pleuri they are covering the entire surface of the lung. The membrane which is in contact with the lung is known as visceral pleura and this moves with the lung. Whereas, the membrane which is adherent to the inner chest wall as well as thoracic side of diaphragm is known as parietal pleura and this membrane moves with the chest as well as diaphragm. Between the visceral and the parietal pleura is a thin space called as pleural cavity or pleural space and this space contains fluid called as pleural fluid small quantity of pleural fluid, it helps to keep this both the pleuri together and it also allows lungs to slide on the chest wall, but at the same time they cannot be separated from the chest wall. Now let us study innervation of the lungs. Lungs are innervated by autonomic nervous system. There are beta 2 receptors on the tracheobronchial tree and sympathetic stimulation will act through this beta 2 receptors and cause bronchodilation. Whereas, there are muscarinic receptors on tracheobronchial tree and parasympathetic nervous system acts through this muscarinic receptors to cause bronchoconstriction. Apart from these two sympathetic and parasympathetic, there are certain other fibers which secrete VIP vasoactive intestinal peptide and that also causes bronchoconstriction and these fibers are called as non-cholinergic, non-adrenergic fibers. Now let us study the functions of respiratory system. Functions we can divide grossly into two, respiratory functions and non-respiratory functions. Respiratory function is as we have seen in the beginning to provide oxygen and to remove carbon dioxide from the body. This function is achieved by the processes like pulmonary ventilation, gas exchange across the respiratory membrane transport of these gases through the blood and regulation of respiration. Now, let us study non-respiratory functions of lungs. First and foremost function is defensive function. As we know the lungs are exposed to atmosphere and when we are breathing atmospheric air in along with that air, numerous other particles are also entering in the respiratory system. So, all these particles should be filtered. So, particulate matter if it is greater than 10 micron in size, it will be filtered with the help of hairs in the nostrils. If the material is between 2 to 10 microns in diameter, it will be trapped in the mucus that is secreted in the nose as well as pharynx and also it will be removed by cuffing reflex and ciliary escalator action. But if the material is less than 2 microns in diameter, it can easily reach to the alveoli where it will be removed by the alveolar macrophages. Another important function of respiratory system is to humidify the air as well as to warm up the air 
to body temperature and this both these functions are performed by conducting zone also the entire respiratory passage is lined by bronchial secretions which contain antibody a iga and it also plays role in defense against pathogens next non respiratory function of lungs include blood reservoir function at any given time about 450 ml of extra blood is present in respiratory system which can be utilized as per the need of the body alveolar capillaries also play important role in filtering the blood it will effectively filter blood clots fibrin emboli detached cancer cells etc and all these functions are brought about by a very strong fibrinolytic system various lytic enzymes present in the pulmonary capillary endothelium as well as macrophages pressure in this pulmonary circulation is very low and it helps to keep alveoli dry which will help in gas exchange process alveolar is the site for exchange of drugs like anesthetics aerosols or bronchodilators so it is not only the exchange of gases but exchange of various medicines also is taking place at the level of respiratory system respiratory system also performs secretory functions for example type 2 pneumocytes they secrete surfactant mast cells secrete histamine apud cells are responsible for removal of prostaglandin e bradycanin serotonin etc then there is formation of angiotensin 2 apud cells are also concerned with synthesis of vip CCKPZ that is cholecystokinin pancreatinin substance P and somatostatin so respiratory system is also a site for various secretory functions paranasal sinuses makes the skull light and this is very important so that our neck can support the weight of head as well as brain they also are responsible for offering resonance to the voice and they also protects brain from facial trauma and lastly this respiratory system plays important role in the act of phonation now all these functions are seen after the baby is born because fetal lungs are in collapsed state as the baby is born and it cries that allows air to be forced into the alveoli and this is the first breath of the baby and from this first breath onwards the independent breathing continues throughout the life So here we finish with the introduction of respiratory system. Thank you. If you enjoy my sessions, press the like button and share it with your friends. If you haven't yet subscribed my channel, press the subscribe button. To get notifications about new releases, press bell icon. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.